um, first things first, uh, what I'm going to do is um, take a big brush. So I'm working on um, just, this isn't stretch watercolor paper, this is just watercolor paper taped down to a bit of board. Um, if you are using loose watercolor paper, you might want to wet the back first before you do this um, wet bit on top. So I'm going to take a big, big um, mop brush just with water in it. And the first thing I'm going to do is um, create sort of an arc <clears throat> coming from this left hand side across the paper to the right hand side. Reasonable amount of water in there, it doesn't need to be stacks, but as well as long as it's fairly wet. Okay, something like that. And then the second bit of water that I'm going to do is just pull down towards the bottom. Not all the way across, so I'm leaving this area dry, okay? But I'm, I'm, I'm gradually wetting this left hand down towards this left hand corner. Okay, that's probably enough. So, color wise, <clears throat> going to use um, some paint gray. So just mixing up some Payne's Grey in my, in my palette. And into the Payne's Grey, I'm gonna put a little bit of cobalt blue or cerulean blue if you've got it, or wh whichever blue you've got there will be fine. And a tiny bit of red, crimson red, just to warm it up a touch. <clears throat> Not too much, just a little bit. So it's got a, a mild, purpley tinge to it, not too strong, but mild purple tinge. So the first thing I'm gonna do then is bring some color in from this left-hand side. Kind of like so. <clears throat> okay, that's enough. Now I need to tip it and I need to use my brush. In fact, let's just put a little bit more color in there. So I'm going to take it a little bit higher past the, so this is now going into dry paper. So you'll notice the difference. That edge won't creep, this edge is creeping. So I'm just pulling it up a little bit into the dry. I'm going to leave a few little whitier spots. I'll just wash that out, wash that out there. Now I'm going to take my big mop brush with a bit of water in it. So I'm still tilting the board away from me. And before this has time to dry, I'm just going to lose all of these little sharp edges and just wash out an amount of the pigment just to give me some very soft, soft edges, like so. And still keeping it tilted away, slight angle, so I'm going towards the corner now. Uh, what do I do with that pipette? Oh, there is. So I'm going to take a pipette. You can do it with a brush if you haven't got a pipette, you could just use a rigger. This has just got water in it. And I'm just going to drop a bit of water in just to run through this top part of the cloud, just to wash it away a little bit in places. Okay, keeping it tipping away. Take some tissue and I'm just going to mop up the excess water from this edge. <clears throat> okay, now lay it back down. Now we just start work on the bottom part. So I'm actually tilting the board quite, quite strongly towards me and I'm going to turn it so it's got a bit of angle to it. And let that creep just for the moment and then I'm going to add a bit more colour to it. So you see where it's starting to creep into the, into the wet patch. Now I'm going to run a slightly stronger band out of colour into this darker, this, this sort of where the darker part of the cloud is. You're out of shot, Stuart. 
Sorry, there you go. We're out of shot, that's better. Thank you. <clears throat> so just a bit of dark into start the darker part of the cloud off. Just going to even it out before it spreads too quickly. So I'm just tipping the tipping the board just to get the paint to move across a little bit more. <clears throat> Once it's gone far enough, then I'm just going to let it run down at an angle again towards towards this right hand corner. Let's get that moving. Now, oh, I'm moving like the pet again. What have I done with that? Just put that down and I can't find it. Brilliant. Oh, done with that. Oh, there it is. Right, so grabbing my pipette again. Some water. Keeping the board tilted. Going to start to drop in some water. Just to get the paint to um, move a bit more. Might even add a bit more colour. Slightly washier colour, just below that water bit that I've just dropped in. Let's do that again, add a bit more water at the base of this one. It's a bit messy, unfortunately, with all the water splashing around, so you might want to make sure you've got plenty of kitchen roll to hand. Just wash all these out so we don't end up with lines. And I'm going to wash this away so we end up with very, very soft fruit here. Leaving a little bit of dry there, just a bit of light shining through, which is quite nice sometimes to leave. Okay. So let's spin that back around a little bit. So we're starting to get this sort of rainy kind of um, effect developing. So again, back to adding a bit more um, washy color. So this is where the color is slightly thinner than the color that I put on here. And I'm introducing it, if you notice, that's where I dropped the water, so it's still quite wet. So I'm coming just below that, so I'll get a little bit of a change in tone. So this will be slightly darker than that, but that will be darker. Uh, sorry, that will be darker than that. So you get this sort of subtle undulation in the um, in the tones. So I leave a little gap. So I'm not going right up to the dark bit that we put on originally. I'm leaving a little gap to um, suggest some light popping through the cloud or something of that nature. Perhaps a bit more over here, just a tiny bit. Okay, and then we'll start to wash that out. So a bit more water. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> so we sort of got a rain band coming down there now. Oops, kick the board. So I'm just going to mop all of this bottom area up. We don't need all of this. Just keep this really soft through here because this is where our land is going to go. So we can actually start to reduce a little bit of the size of the cloud. So this is just using the mop brush or a big brush that you've got and I'm just blotting it off on the paper, keeping it clean and almost using it like an eraser. So I'm just wiping up anything that I don't really want, like so. Okay, so that's kind of the cloud in, maybe a little bit higher. Give me a bit more room for the, for the beachy sort of area. Come up a touch more. Just one more wipe, just to keep it clean. OK, 
Okay. So now, I'm just going to look to see how shiny the surface is because the next part needs to go in while it's still wet, but not so wet that it's going to um, run too quickly. So I'm going to flatten that out. And starting from this, <coughs> this side now, we're going to start to introduce the distant trees <coughs> or bank or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and before I do that, I'm just going to take some tissue. And I'm just going to blot off a little bit of the moisture that's above the what's going to be the tree line. So it's not so wet. Diving into some Payne's grey, I might even drop a little tiny bit of blue in there and a tiny bit of burnt sienna just to change the colour a little bit. And now using my rigger, that's the top of my wet band there. So I'm actually going to be dropping the paint in a good few centimetres below to give it room to be able to creep up. Okay, so don't drop it right in at the top. Give yourself room for the paint to creep. Otherwise you'll end up with just a big blob. So using the side of the brush, I'm just touching, touching the paper, maybe alternating the, the height a little bit here and there. And as we're starting to get over to the cloud, um, I'm going to let the, the colours just start to blend together a little bit more. So we're coming across, all the way across, and then through this distant part, we're going to have some kind of land indication. Perhaps a little bit straighter than that. Let's bring that up a little bit higher. And obviously when these colours dry, they're probably going to dry very closely together. So it'll be very soft with any luck. So now I'm going to take a bit more blue into that Payne's Grey mix. And then this is the top of the, the distant bank. Now I'm coming forwards just a tiny bit and start to develop the, the kind of the land that might be in front of this land that's sort of further away. A slightly thicker color now. You wanna be using the paint a bit thicker so that it doesn't run quite so quickly. So coming across a few spots, perhaps the odd line through there. Although it's going to bleed, it doesn't really matter. So then coming across, we've actually got what looks like some sort of tree or shape or something in here. Make that a bit taller. Coming across to this right hand side, a bit darker again. A bit more paint into the mix because this right hand side is pretty dark and you could even argue that you could probably put the very very dark bit in once it's dried because the shape of it looks a bit more crisp than the other the other shapes but we'll just put a soft shape in maybe sharpen it up afterwards So a bit of that in there. And then there's a something rather down in this foreground area. I'm not quite sure what that is, but we'll just put a bit of something in there. Perhaps the odd 
a slight dark bit here and there. A bit darker in this area. Okay. And then one final thing before we can let that dry is <clears throat> I'm going to run some just run some brown now for the kind of the beachy area still keeping the board tilted towards me but just dipping into some um burnt umber or raw umber or whatever you know kind of brown you've got just a sort of sandy brown color and then starting from a little bit watery starting from this left hand side I'm going to start to bring that just below just below these darts that we put on let them in let them mingle maybe a slight change in angle of the of the land could I leave a light space through here to suggest some light popping through the whatever that is, whether it's a beach or slightly stronger brown now at the base of this dark. And then we'll just let these dark masses Um, come across the beach, maybe undulate it, give it some slight angle. Big strokes. Okay, and then a teeny bit of blue in there as well. A little bit of the um, cobalt blue. What brown did you use, Stuart? I just used um, raw umber or burnt umber if you've got it. Okay, thank you. Just a little bit of blue in there. And perhaps a tiny bit of blue. Just wiggling its way back there. Okay, so we'll let that, we'll let that dry now on the flat. So I need to hair dry that off um, before I can go in and add any more strength to it. Let's just soften this off. Use that as well. So what I'm going to do first of all is re-wet my cloud. I want to make it slightly darker. Not too dark, but just a little bit darker. So I'm going to rerun a bit of water up into this sky area, like we did in the first place. <clears throat> and then taking my, um, taking a brush, medium sized brush, it's gonna go darker now in the color. So paint gray. And I'll put a little bit more lizarding into that. And a bit more blue, cobalt blue. It's sort of a very dark bluey purple. And then I'm going to run that into the cloud in places. Again, in the sort of in the middle of the of the cloud band. Not right, not right at the edge of where I've just put the water. More in the um, in the sort of center. load that up a bit more dark. Just let it run away at the top up there. Okay, so I need to tilt the tilt the board again to get the paint to start to run down. Again, taking my mop brush, I'm going to coax coax this color in the direction I want it. 
obviously down towards this left hand, kind of left hand corner. Bit of water. Just run some of that through through the um, through the cloud. A little bit more there. Now as it comes down to the bottom, I'm just going to mop mop that up with my um, mop brush, just so we don't end up losing all of our softness down the bottom here. <clears throat> just a bit more in there, a little bit. Okay, need to get that tilted a bit more. Tissue. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna blot off the excess just to keep it soft. Okay, so back into Payne's Grey, just going to add a bit of moisture into this foreground area, Not too much because obviously I want it to be reasonably crisp in terms of the shape. So paint's grey, a little bit of um, burnt sienna in it. So just starting off with some of these stronger shapes. Let's bring that down. Got some darker shapes in here. And then there's a few over here. And just let that sort itself out. Just keep the bottom of it soft. Okay. And then in the foreground, need a little bit more brown in places, perhaps with a slightly drier brush a bit more texture. So I'm not going to wet the paper first on this um, for this one. I'm just going to bring the paint in over the top of what we've got with a slightly dry brush dragging type of technique to um, break up this foreground area. It's sort of a, I'm sure I'm gonna worry about it too much, but there's kind of a bay here. Okay. And then the last thing will just be a little bit of clean up with some white. Just dry that off first.
take a bit of um, gouache or watercolor white, whatever you've got to hand. Rigger. Just dipping straight into the into the paint. So it's nice and thick on the brush. And then I'm just going to re-detail some of this light that's hitting um, this sort of beach. There's a little bit of white in there. Maybe I know it's not quite like it, but just a little bit running through there and perhaps a tiny bit on my water. So the first thing you're going to want to do is um, we're going to do a graduated wash. So if you've not done one of those before, then um, this is a good time to learn it. I'm just going to clean my palette out very quickly so I can do a, a sort of a brownie wash rather than a grey wash. So you're going to want to mix up some um, either some burnt sienna or um, raw rumba or raw sienna, something of that nature that's got a sort of a, a warm a warm note to it. <clears throat> so I'm going to just use some um, raw rumba and maybe just put a little bit of something warmer in there, a little bit of yellow just to brighten it up. Okay, and then we don't want this too strong a wash, but you want it to obviously show up. So you want the mix to be fairly thin, but strong enough, obviously, that it's gonna show up on the paper. Now we're gonna do this on dry paper. So you're gonna make sure that your board is tilted about, I don't know, about um, 10, 15 degrees towards you. It's very important it's tilted. If it's flat, you're not gonna be able to do this. All right, so I'm loading up a big brush with plenty of paint, plenty of um, mixture, and I'm gonna load up the top of my paper and I'm gonna get a bead to start. <clears throat> so loading up really, really well. And then can you see that this dark edge now, can you see where we've got a nice dark edge? That's the bead, okay? So what you're gonna to need to do is each time cut through that bead and keep it going down the paper. Otherwise it's gonna to start to dry out and you'll end up with lines. So look, I cut through the bead and we keep it wet. So we're keeping that moisture along that edge to keep the paper, uh, to keep the, um, the wash going. Okay, so it's nice and smooth. Now I'm coming down probably about to there. Now I want to start to reduce the color content. So I'm adding water into my mix. So it's still got color in there, but it's more water now. So cutting through the beads, a bit more water. So I'm starting to wash this out. So this is gonna be a color to nothing wash. So coming all the way down, keep adding some water. So a bit more water bit more water, starting to wash it right out now. So it's pretty much just water now I'm putting on. More water, clean water ideally. I'm trying to find some clean water. Clean water. And then we just let it disappear, obviously to the bottom. And then you just wanna let that gradually dry naturally. All right, so that we don't, um, uh, get too many cauliflowers or anything like that in it. You want to mop up the bottom so you don't get any excess run back. And that is the graduated wash to start us off with. If you end up finding you're getting lines um, whilst you're doing this, there's one or two reasons for that. One is you're not putting enough paint and water on at the same time. So it's drying out on you as you're kind of doing it, or you're using a brush that's not holding enough moisture. So if you use too small a brush, so say for example, I tried to do this with this size brush, which is about an A, I don't know what size paper this is, but it's, it's bigger than A, A4. And if I tried to do it with a small brush, A, it would take me forever. 
and B, I'll end up with loads and loads of lines in it because um, it's taking too long to get the paint down. So I'll let you do that. I'm just going to go and clean my water and then we'll crack on with the next bit. I'm just going to dry mine off quickly so we can then move on to the next part. <clears throat> so the next stage will be to put in, so we're going to do this in stages. Obviously, we're going to do um, the, the far buildings, then we do the closer buildings, and the closer buildings, then we do the foreground buildings. So we need to kind of do it in stages. So for the first stage, we're going to mix up a colour that's not too dissimilar from the one that we've just put on. So it's going to be the brown and some of the yellow in it and it'll probably be it depending on how far you want these buildings to be in the distance um you want to be careful about how much pigment you put in your um in your um paint too much pigment and obviously these will these buildings will be too strong and then they're going to jump forwards too little pigment and it'll just disappear into the um the wash that we've just put down. The second, the second version is probably better than the first version if you're going to get it wrong. Make it too light rather than make it too strong. Okay, because you can always go over it again, but it's very hard to get rid of it if it's too um, if it's too dark. So for this, I'm going to use. Um, I'll start off by using a rigger, and I'm going to use a rigger because just because it's easier to control the drawing of this. Um, so just taking the brown and the yellow again, just mixing it a little bit more up so I've got enough to do this with. So I'm going to rest my hand on and we're going to start the buildings off, I don't know, let's start off about here. And I'm not too worried about the actual, um, in fact before I do that, I need to just add a bit of moisture. So what I'm going to do is my the roof of the buildings are going to come somewhere about here. The base of the buildings are going to be down here. So I need to put some moisture at the base of the buildings, not the roof. OK, the base of the buildings. So let's just add a bit of water on there. And this is just to buy me time so that as I'm drawing my my roofs. And the paint hits the the um, the wet spot, it's not going to just dry out on me too quickly. So sorry, sorry, I have to go and start again. What colour are you using for the building? Uh, so for the buildings, I'm just using pretty much the same colour I've used for the background. All right, okay, thank you. So it's kind of the the, the yellow and the brown together, really. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah, tar. So we'll just come across a bit more brown in there, I think. Possibly a little bit too light. Might be okay. So bring that a little bit higher. Just a few little chimney shapes. Something a bit taller there. Coming across, comes down. Oh, we've got a little apex there, but we won't worry about that. So it comes down lower. So as I said, you don't really need to worry too much about the accuracy of the drawing. Um, it's more about just practicing this wash. That's really what I'm interested in. Controlling the paint. And then a bit more colour into these. So we come across, there's a peak there, some sort of spire. And then we're starting to come down lower. A few more doodads. There's a roof there. Something going on over here. Kind of comes up again. 
comes across and then we're coming down and then away into the distance. Okay, so before this has time now to dry, I'm gonna take my mop brush. I'm just gonna run it all the way through that base just to clean that up. So we don't have too strong a band of, of color in there. Just wash it away, plenty of water. So here we don't need to worry about the lower section of the painting, we're just gonna wash it out so we don't get a line. That's the most important thing, we don't want a line. Just gonna take a little bit more brown. I'm gonna darken up this building a little bit more, just in the tops. Just adding a slight more color. Yeah, all the way along, just to give it a little bit more, a little bit more strength. And I don't like it stopping there, so I'm going to take it out to the side. There we go. Okay. So that's layer one. So we can, you can either just leave that to dry naturally, or you can hair dry it. Um, in fact, there's a little spot there I need to get rid of. But ideally, um, what you don't want to do is, I mean, yeah, you can tweak the shapes a little bit and and kind of try and make sure your uprights are upright and all the rest of it, but try not to play with the wash too much because every time you go back into that wash and go back into that wash, you're introducing new moisture and it's going to add an effect to, the, um, to what you've already got on there. So it's better just once you once you're happy with it, leave it alone, let it dry, and then you're good to go for the next layer. So I'm just going to dry mine off. Okay, so the next step then, very, very simple, you just repeat it. Um, the only thing you need to remember on the next stage is that when you start to introduce your water, you leave enough space so that the, 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 the roofs of the next layer of buildings um, don't come up too high. And also the color that you put on in the next layer of buildings is slightly stronger. So as long as you get those two things right, then you're on the right direction. So I'm gonna do the same little trick again. I take my big mop brush. So I think my roof line, so this sort of orangey brown roof line is gonna come somewhere through sort of this area. Okay, the, where my top finger is. So somewhere through there. So I think the band of water needs to come maybe about here. Okay, for the second layer of the roof. So not where you think the roof line is going to be, but just come down a little bit um, so that you give yourself room to bring that roof line through. So the color then is going to be um, the brown, the yellow that we used originally, and I'm gonna put a bit of burnt sienna in to make it more orange. And as I said, you want the color to be slightly stronger. 
So more pigment in the um, in the paint. And then all we do is we just come back in and we start to draw again. So we've got some shapes. Oops, I've got something on my brush there. So we've got some shapes kind of, and we're doing the drawing as, a, as I said earlier, on the dry paper, not on the wet bit. So you see when I hit the wet bit, it creeps down and I'm doing the, the roof tops on the dry paper. Can't stress that enough. If you try and do this on the wet paper, you're going to get yourself into a right pickle. So make sure you're doing your drawing bit on the dry. I might need to go darker in a minute, but I'll get the drawing done first and then I can darken it up. So then we've got. Uh, Taking themselves off mute. Oh, let me just uh, just mute that because you don't need to hear that. Oh. Okay. So we we'll just continue the continue the wash across, and obviously you don't want to fiddle too much because all of this down here is drying while. You're drawing, let's flatten out a little bit, whilst you're drawing the um, the rooftops. So, you know, there is a there is a time constraint to this. You can't spend hours and hours fiddling with your drawing too much. You just want to get it in. And then um, hopefully you'll be not fighting the painting too much. I think these must be sort of trees or something coming down there. We'll just get that in. We'll leave a few little holes, a couple of little holes there, perhaps. And then we're coming down. And then I think there's some sort of, I'm in the wet again there now, so we might not be able to do that. We'll just put a spiral or two down there. The old spire over here. And we'll fill the edge in. Okay, so now I'm going to darken it up slightly, so a bit more brown. A bit more burnt sienna. So it's a bit stronger. And I'm just going to drop this in. Just to make it a bit more punchy in places. Made a mistake there, but never mind. Shouldn't have really gone quite so dark behind that one, but it doesn't matter. Right, so let's wash all this out again now. <clears throat> it's the same as we did before. Plenty of water. wash a bit more out. Give it a bit more shape. Tilt the board, give it some um, direction. I even run a little bit of water through this. It seems to have some water marks. So let's just do a bit of that. Make it a bit more interesting. Could probably do with washing some of this out as well. Because we're gonna have a tower in front of that, aren't we?
let's get rid of that. And then because we're not doing the, the actual running effect, I'm just gonna wash all of that away or brush it away, I should say. Okay, and then again, we just need to let that dry. So we'll give it a quick blast with the hair dry. Excess. Right, so I'll quickly repeat same process for number two, uh, number three, and then number four, and then I can uh, then do a quick lap to see how you've all got on. So again, coming down a little bit with the water. Leaving a fair amount of this area dry. Take my rigger, so I'm going to go to some darker colours now, some bluier colours. So let's go with some cobalt blue. Actually, some cobalt blue and the brown would be quite nice to start off with. So I've got some building shapes coming in from this left hand side. They're coming down. We've got a roof, kind of comes down, comes across. Across the front, some sort of spire. Change the color back into the brownier colors again. So what I'm doing here is I'm just alternating color on my, in my brush. So I've got a bit of brown, maybe a bit of blue. So we get some variation in the, in the wash. Otherwise it can be all just exactly the same color. And then we've got another sort of spire there. Some sort of shape, shape. Coming down back into the blues. Coming across. Sorry, Stuart, did, which bit did you wet? I was mixing I've just my wet paint. down here. Down this there, all, okay. This is all dry at the top here. Oh, okay, thank you. All right. Yeah, lovely, thanks. Uh, coming across a few chimneys. Down, back up. Change the colour again. Let's go to a bit more yellowier colour. Maybe a bit more golden. Just to break it up a little bit. <laughs> then we can come down a fair way and then we've got this sort of meandering bit. And then back to our docks. So 
a bit of Payne's grey in there as well, make it a bit darker. Might be a bit too dark. A bit of brown in there as well. And then we've got this big spire thing to get in. So just draw, try and draw some of that in. I'm not going to worry too much about all the detail on it. I'm just going to fudge it. So it kind of comes up. And then there's this sort of bit on top. And just fill all that shape in. Leave a few little gaps. <clears throat> Maybe for suggestion of some of the architecture. Carrying on down. Keep it coming down. And then out to the right here, we've got a couple more chimneys. And there we go. Right, so mop brush again. Wash out a good percentage of this bottom area. Plenty of moisture. Just running the water into these colors. Just to wash that out. Otherwise we'll end up with no room for our bottom, the bit at the bottom. Oh, so I've just cauliflowered it up there, never mind. Let's lose a bit of that then. Getting a bit too liberal with flinging the water around. Okay. So I need to dry that again. Okay, sorry. Um, so come up a little bit higher here. Chimney top comes down. Coming across up. And then actually I will put a bit of moisture at the bottom here just to stop it drying out. Uh, let's go with some more brown. And have warm, warmer buildings, I think, in the foreground. Let's bring this roof line up a little bit higher. Get some blue. So a bit of blue into this as well. Just ultramarine I've just put in there. Take that roof line across the front. More brown. Just fill all this in, just with some various colours. 
So, and then there's another chimney about there. And then the taller one. Straighten up a little bit. Make this a bit darker. Okay, and then we got the edge of the chimney. A few little chimney spouts lying down. And then you've got the edge of the building. And then there's another little building, which actually we're not going to be able to get in because I've wet the paper, but we'll make him a little bit higher. Bring that off of this building. Because I put some moisture in this area, so I won't be able to do it exactly as the reference. So I'll just adapt it slightly. Another chimney coming across. And then maybe there's a tall building or something right in this corner. <clears throat> it sort of goes out of picture. A little bit more warmth in this bottom corner. A few more blue spots. A bit darker. Okay, I'll just let that run downwards a bit more. Turn on my pipette. I might just add a teensy bit of moisture just at the bottom, just to make it a bit more atmospheric. Just being careful that if you are going to spray it, don't spray it too near the roof line because otherwise you're going to you'll break up the roof line too much. Now, well, the drawing's not brilliant, but it's just an example of how you get the um, uh, the uh, the distance 